Okay, so get this diving deep into Taiwan today. Ooh, interesting. You know, everyone's talking about Taiwan and China, right? Right, yeah. But it's way more than just like a territory thing. I bet. And we got this video someone sent in from The Economist. Oh, cool. It breaks down like the whole history of Taiwan and China. Okay. And how they've been kind of intertwined for centuries. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Xi Jinping, he's saying Taiwan yeah. will be reunified with the mainland. Like, it's a done deal. Hmm. But Taiwan, they're over there like thriving as a democracy. Right. It's like a total clash of ideas. Yeah. So we got to rewind the clock way back to understand this. Okay, yeah, let's go back in time. So picture this Europeans. They finally reach this island. Mm -hmm. They call it Formosa. You know, beautiful island in Portuguese. I didn't know that. And guess what? They don't find like a Chinese society. Oh, really? It's not what they were expecting at all. So who was there? The indigenous people. The mm -hmm. Malat Polynesians. Wow. They have their own whole thing going on. Like, you know, vibrant culture, totally distinct traditions. Interesting. Some of them might seem a little, well, let's just say different. Oh, like what? Well, they practiced headhunting. Whoa, hold on, headhunting, seriously. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, whoa, different I, world. That really throws a wrench in the whole, like, Taiwan's always been Chinese mm, narrative. Right. It's like this huge reminder that Taiwan has its own story. Exactly. Totally separate from mainland China. I'm already seeing things differently. And, of course, beautiful island equals colonial powers. Oh, yeah, here they come. You've got the Dutch, the Spanish... They all want a piece. Makes sense. But then comes this guy, Kaksinga, a Ming Dynasty loyalist. Okay. He uses Taiwan as like a base. A base. For what? To resist the new Qing Dynasty on the mainland. Oh, wow. So he's like a rebel leader. Exactly. And that's huge because it sets this precedent. What do you mean? Taiwan becomes a place of refuge. A refuge. You're people who oppose the mainland regime. Interesting. It's like this theme that echoes through Taiwan's history. So it keeps happening. Yeah. Like a pattern almost. I see. This idea of Taiwan as a safe haven. A counterpoint to whatever's happening in China. Exactly. Like a mirror image almost. Wow, that's fascinating. Okay, so eventually the Qing Dynasty, they take over Taiwan. Makes sense. They were a huge empire. Right. It wasn't like some deeply rooted ancient connection. So it wasn't always part of China? No. The Qing Dynasty was massive. They were expanding everywhere. Right. They saw Taiwan as like another piece of the puzzle. Just expanding their power. Exactly. And that kind of ties into that old idea of China mm -hmm. being the center of the world. Oh, yeah. Like they're the middle kingdom. Right. Everything revolves around them. I see. But then 1895 rolls around and things change big time. What happens? Japan. They win this war against China. Wow. And they take Taiwan as their colony. Whoa, that's a huge shift. It was a total blow to China's pride. I bet. I mean, imagine losing to Japan, who was seen as inferior at the time. Right. It led to the fall of the Qing Dynasty. Wow. And it created this power vacuum. So things were unstable. Totally. And that's where the nationalists and communists come in. Right. They were both vying for control. Exactly. They both wanted to fill that void. This is getting complicated. And you know what's interesting? Yeah. Even though Japanese rule was harsh. It was a colonial situation. Right. But it also shaped Taiwanese identity. Really? How so? Kind of pushed them away from China even more. So it made them more distinct. Exactly. They started seeing themselves as separate. Mm hmm. That's a key point. Okay. So fast forward through World War II. Okay. China's in the middle of this crazy civil war. Right. The communists versus the nationalists. And the communists, they win in 1949. So what happened to the nationalists? Chiang Kai-shek and his followers, they had to flee. Where'd they go? Guess. You'll never guess. Uh, I don't know. Tell me. Taiwan. No way. Seriously. Yeah. It's like history repeating itself. Just like Coxinga centuries before. Exactly. They sought refuge on the same island. That's wild. And what happens next is truly amazing. Okay, I am on the edge of my seat. Taiwan, under the nationalists, they transformed the place. What do you mean? It's like an economic miracle. Huh. They become a tech powerhouse. Wow. A beacon of democracy in the Chinese-speaking world. That's incredible. It's like they took everything they learned from the West. And applied it to their own situation. Exactly. They focused on education, smart investments. Sounds like a recipe for success. And they fostered this culture of innovation. That's amazing. It's a fascinating story. It really is. And it brings us to today. And Xi Jinping. Okay. He sees Taiwan as unfinished business from the Civil War. Right. He wants to bring it back into the fold. But it's not just about territory for him, is it? 
No, I think it's deeper than that. It's like this challenge to the Communist Party's whole narrative. What do you mean? They've been pushing this idea that Chinese culture mm -hmm. and authoritarian rule are like inseparable. Right. Like they go hand in hand. But Taiwan's existence totally contradicts that. Yeah, it's like a living counterexample. Exactly. exactly. A thriving democracy with a distinct identity. And it's a huge threat to their ideology. Right. Because it shows that Chinese people can be free. And successful without the Communist Party. Exactly. So what can we take away from all this? Well, it seems clear that Taiwan has its own history. Right. It's not just an extension of mainland China. And its people have forged their own identity. They've been shaped by all these different influences. And their success as a democracy is a powerful symbol. It shows that there's another way for Chinese societies to exist. And that's a very dangerous idea for the Communist Party. So here's something to think about. Okay. What if Taiwan was reunified with mainland China? Hmm. That's a scary thought. What would happen to those democratic ideals? Right. Would they just disappear? Would those hard-won freedoms be crushed? It's a chilling possibility. And what would that mean for the region? Would other countries be emboldened to crack down on dissent? It's a question with no easy answers. But it's one we need to keep asking. Because the future of Taiwan is intertwined with the future of freedom. And that's something we should all care about. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing this to light. Yeah, this was a really insightful deep dive. Definitely made me think. That's what we aim for. Keep up the great work. Will do. And to everyone listening, keep exploring this topic. It's so important. We'll be back next time with another deep dive. Can't wait. Until then, stay curious. And stay informed. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.